when things don't work out in life, you need to keep moving on. Uh, oh my God. Uh, excuse me. Uh, oh God, I shouldn't have taken those medicine before. I should have just waited. I told you I shouldn't have taken the medicine. Uh, oh my God. I'm so sorry. Um, where was I? So since I've retired from music, I've been getting really into freestyle dirt biking. Last week I was filming a video at my buddy's house. I went off this huge jump. I'm soaring through the air. The bike slips out from underneath me. I fall face first, full face plant. I get a concussion. I'm seeing stars. Next thing I know, I wake up in a hospital bed. A male nurse comes up to me. He's like, sir, you've broken both your wrists and five bones in your face. Apparently I cracked my forehead bone. I like to refer to it as the third eye. My psyche was totally thrown off. I broke two bones in my nose. I broke my right cheek and my left cheek, and I got 32 stitches in my chin. I had to get full facial reconstructive surgery. The first few days were complete hell, but I'm a tough cookie, and I can handle whatever life throws at me. Baby too controlling, I'ma feed you to the wolves when you get nasty back at me but baby don't distract me if your partner starts to treat you like shit you need to get the hell out of there don't let anyone treat you wrong don't let anyone control you and definitely don't let anyone stop you from chasing your dreams life is short and your energy is precious do not waste it on toxic people i'm a gonna i lost the like why the hell you wanna play me that way? You're bad, babe. You double-faced entendre. When you fall in love, you get love drunk. You only see what you wanna see. But the second you realize someone's played you, it all comes crashing down, collapsing. You start to see a whole different side of a person. A double entendre is something that has two totally different meanings. A double-faced entendre is somebody who has two totally different personalities. Unbeknownst to you, one side being an angel, the other side being a devil. Now this is a term I've coined myself, and if anybody at Webster Dictionary is watching this, or anybody at home has access to an Urban Dictionary account, if you can help me legitimize this term, I will cut you in at 5% of any earnings from this. You have my word. Life goes on and 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 on. When things don't work out in life, you need to keep moving on. Whether you like it or not, life goes on with or without you. My original lyric was life goes onion because I feel like life is like a giant onion and the more you unravel, the more you find out about yourself. Plus, everyone knows I'm a huge Shrek fan. And a wise man once said, ogres are like onions. And this song's taken from the deluxe version of my album, Ugly is Beautiful. So you know I've been about that ogre life. Babe, you best believe it. I'ma rip you up to pieces. I'm a lover, not a fighter. But I'll light this place on fire. The lyric, I'ma rip you up to pieces, is all about passion. It can be taken in the literal sense as a sexual innuendo. Like I'm gonna take you to smash town while we bump uglies. Or it can be seen figuratively. Like I'm gonna chew you out and shred you for all the shit you put me through. Either way, both of these things are coming from a place of passion. It doesn't just have to apply to romance. It could be other things in life. Think about celebrities. Kanye West is a great example. People that love Kanye love to talk about Kanye. People that hate Kanye love to talk about Kanye. Duh. And it doesn't matter because Kanye loves Kanye. He's already won because he's infiltrated your mind and the influence is there whether you like it or not. What, you guys can't put on some fucking AC, man? It's like 100 degrees in here. Can someone get me my fan? I want it, I'm on it. But baby, at least I'm honest. I get tired of explaining as these seasons keep on changing. There's no beating around the bush on this one. Literally the bush. But it could be anything. Whatever you want in life, you have to be honest with yourself and you need to ask the world for it. The world has a way of bringing these things to you. But you also have to work for it. 
You can't just wait around picking your nose, hoping it's going to go down. You're going to end up a white-haired, shriveled-up old raisin, wondering where the hell all the time went. Uh, my stomach, man. I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. I got to take a fat deuce, dude. Let's wrap this thing up. Work all day and then I wake up. Work all day and then I wake up. Work all day and then I wake up. Work all day. I'm a workaholic. It's a big part of my life. All my best friends are workaholics. Everybody I know is a workaholic. Pretty much anyone who's made a significant impact in their short-lived life was a workaholic at some point or another. When I wake up, I start working. I work all day till the sun goes down. I work through the graveyard shift. I go to bed when the sun comes up. Then I wake up and do it all over again. The cycle repeats itself. Even when I retired from music, I didn't take a day off. I just focused my energy on other things like motorcycling. Obviously, as you can see, I need a lot more work on that. But the only time I stop working is when I'm forced to, whether it's an accident or sickness and the world is making me stop. Just last week, the doctor says, Oliver, you're gonna need to stop riding for four months. I said, sir, politely, go fuck yourself. Nobody tells me what to do. I'll be back on my motorcycle in four days. And when I'm back, I'll be bigger, better, and stronger than ever. Next time you see me, I'm gonna be a completely new man. Talent release. Hopefully what is this? It's a talent release if you could manage your sign. Oh God, I drooled on it. Is that gonna be a problem? I'm sorry, I don't remember anything, dude. The drugs they're giving me is so strong.